Where is our warrior king at the end of the Zero Military chapter? Where is our warrior king? It's certainly not Barack Hussein Obama. I wouldn't call him a great commander-in-chief. Who would you rank him with? One of the greats or one of the worst? Now, the man who put up the spider webs on his house would probably think he's the greatest mili military commander in hif history because he uh, has deballed the military to such an extent that the military is almost ineff ineffective. The Islamo-fascists, I remind you, are fighting a religiously sanctioned war, if you consider Islam a religion at all. Retired U.S. Admiral James Ace Lyons does not consider it a religion. He said, quote, Until you recognize Islam as a political movement, masquerading as a religion, you're never going to come to grips with it, close quote. And he asks, How else could you describe these maniacs who are willing to kill boys in Iraq, machine gun them for watching soccer in the name of Allah? No religion would teach that. These are the brutal tactics of a Jacobin political movement. That's one more thing the progressives and Islamo-fascists have in common. And I go on. And I say that now we're back to where we were in the Middle Ages with the Islamo-fascists on the march towards Vienna. This is not World War I. We are not fighting European nations who recognize international rules of war. We're fighting throwback lunatics who don't realize it's 2015 and who rape, murder, and torture as their ancestors did a thousand years ago. And I write this, we don't need a jobs program. We don't need diversity in the Air Force. We don't need equal opportunity for mullahs. We need a warrior king crusader to rebuild our military and defend Western civilization once again. And then I close the chapter with a little paragraph, which I, I feel compelled to read you, called The Viking's Fate. If you think social engineering of the U.S. military is without consequences, I invite my skeptical readers to study the Danish or Swedish military of today. After many a decade of progressiveness, the descendants of Vikings are today unable or unwilling to defend their homeland against an Islamist invasion. Witness the capitulation. Thank the progressives, the gays, the feminists, and the socialists. Is this what you want for the United States, to be a helpless giant? They do. No one has written anything as powerful. It's called Government Zero, out in a few weeks. You can buy it on Amazon. Buy it for a friend. Buy it for a neighbor who puts up the spider webs before Halloween even appears. Buy it for the neighbor who is so pompous that no matter, no matter what this progressive Islamist alliance does, they support it because they are blind. They are blind, they are deaf, they are dumb. 855-400-7282. Some callers now. Daniel on KSFO, welcome to the program. What's uh, on your mind? I just want to say I'm so thankful for being able to listen to your Trump conversation. And I don't call it an interview because I heard genuine warmth. I heard the truth, which is most important. And I heard an intelligent conversation between two individuals that absolutely care about this country. Well, you did. That's true. And I think it's, it's for similar and different reasons at the same time. He recognizes that unless we stop this progressive Islamist revolution that's going on right in front of our eyes, any successful family is in their crosshairs and they're going to be destroyed. And they have to be, and the opposition has to be stopped. And I think most middle class Americans recognize that. I genuinely do. I don't think you have to be wealthy to understand what they'll do to the middle class unless they are rolled back. We are fighting for a national survival. After seven years of this demon and what he's doing to this country, and it's just gotten worse with the so-called trade deal, he hasn't stopped. The man is a maniac. He won't stop in his desire to decimate this nation's middle class. And that's why I said in the last hour that I think that they're warming up Biden in the bullpen because even the Democrats are terrified of the damage he's causing to their brand. I'm going to send you a copy of Government Zero. I hope to give Donald Trump a copy of the book. Glad to hear his book was delayed a week. I think that they did delay it by a week because it would have been crazy for the two of us to have a book out the same week uh, in the bookstores. First of all, my publisher, I got to tell you point blank, when I heard about it, I said, what the heck is going on here? Why would his publisher publish on October 27th, the same day as Government Zero? My publisher has bought, there's a thing in the book business, I think it's called Front of Store D Display. I don't exactly know what it's called. They pay a lot of money to get your book placed on the counter and in up front, you know, of, in, in front of the stores. It's a huge expense. Well, my book's going to be there. And that, that place is taken. You can't buy it now. You understand how that works? It was bought like months ago. 
And so any other book that's going to be competing with mine will not be as visible as mine in the first two or three days. And that's where I'm counting on you, the army, the savage army. I want you to go out like locusts to clean the shelves out. But the point is, is that it would have been foolish to have two great books by two great Americans out the same day, sort of like competing banjos, you know, on the stage. And I'm glad to hear that it may not happen on, on exactly the same day. Just telling you, you know, what came up. I said, oh, my God, I mean, why, why is this happening? Why would they be out on the same day? Well, I said, maybe their publishers, the publisher conspired to knock one book against the other. I said, it can't be that crazy. They're both in business. They wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, who knows who controls anything? <laughs> who knows who owns what? Who knows where the fingers, you know, emanate from? What would you like to say in the remaining minutes of this hour of the Savage Nation? It's a good day for me. Let me look at my website and see what stories are on the michaelsavage.com. Trump on Savage today. Tweet your friends. Well, that's over. Next picture, we, sh we see the corrupt bum from the U.N. there. No place, no place in the United Nations ex-UN General Assembly leader accused of pocketing 500 grand in bribes. Take a look at him. Go ahead. Take a look at him. Nice suit. Nice tie. Built himself a basketball court. Got a Rolex, a suit. Vacations. Stole the money. That's according to the prosecutor. I didn't say. Here's another one for you, those of you who think ISIS is not a real threat, that we in the right are just making it up. ISIS thugs crucify Christian boy age 12 after slicing off fingertips in front of his father because they would not convert to Islam. It's a religion of peace, is. Yeah, it's a religion of peace, is. London Mirror. Guess they made that up, too, in order to make the people who put up the spider webs feel good. There's another picture on my website which you're definitely going to want to share. What Obama will not fight. It's a picture of an ISIS baby with a hand grenade on one side of the infant's head and a pistol on the other side. The picture has since been taken down. It's a little too graphic. We captured it before they removed it. Here's another little story from the London Daily Mail. Arabic, now the fastest growing language in the U.S. Thank you, Hussein. Another little story from WND now. Lesbian bishop remove crosses from the church. She wants to make it more inviting for Muslims to pray there. Look at her. She's a kindly woman. She looks like Kris Kringle's sister. She could be a female Santa Claus. And she just wants to do good. But as I told you a million times, the road to you know where is paved with good intentions. Finally, in the middle of michaelsavage.com, there's a picture of soldiers that puts the fear of God into the hearts not only of ISIS, but the sorority that surrounds Obama. Putin sends feared Speznas, special forces, into Syria to bail out Assad. Well, that's certainly true, but in addition to bailing out Assad, they're certainly going to send ISIS to hell, where I'm sure the virgins are waiting for them with open arms. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation, and um, people are just flooding the switchboards here to talk about what they felt about Donald Trump's interview. For those of you who missed the whole thing or caught none of it, I'm going to post it on my website, michaelsavage.com, uh, after the show. We're going to MP3 it so you can listen to it again if you'd like to catch it and see what you catch inside of it that you didn't hear, that you don't, don't think. It wasn't the same old, I mean, oh, we heard it before, he's everywhere, what's he really saying? He's not specific. I hear that from idiots. They don't listen to him. They already made up their mind, all the genius. He's not specific. He was very specific. He opposes the trade deal, as do I, because it's bad for American business, as does the AFL-CIO. He likes Putin. He can do business with him. That's pretty clear. And he believes that Russia should be let to do what it wants to do with regard to killing ISIS. Because if they want to invest money, let him do it. He's looking at it from a pragmatic point of view. That's simple. That's all. Let's take a couple of quick calls in the time that remains. KSFO, Marlene, what's your comment? Go ahead, please. Hi, Dr. Savage. Uh, Trump was more confident than ever before and saying that to make America great, it's such a simple message that it can get across to any average person. And that's right. And even the guy who has even the guy who has wing nuts in his ears who works in a tire shop. Anyone who works in a tire shop and that's all he hears is this. 
That's all he hears all day long. Even he can understand that Trump might be good for the country. Stay on the line, Marley. We'll send you a copy of your government <laughs> zero. I, I'm not putting down tire guys. I'm just saying that's an example. You know, we keep hearing that America is a racist country. I want to remind you that the, the country is predominantly white people. Let's start with that. That's A. It's still true, despite what the vermin in the media would have you believe. And number two, was it not for the white vote, Obama never would have gotten elected. Don't forget that. So how is it that he hoodwinked so many so-called liberal Democrat white male blue-collar workers to vote for him? Because he lied to them. He hoodwinked them. He's a master salesman. Obama's probably the best salesman in the history of the world. And he tricked them. Now, the fact of the matter is, even they, the guy in the, in the tire shop is too busy to even listen to a show like this. He sees a few things have happened. He sees that Obama's impotence and lies have come to the forefront with regard to, to ISIS. He's been screwing around, like bombing. Nothing happened. They got bigger and stronger. The average guy understands that. They know weakness. They can smell it and see it. They know Obama's been, been, been shucking and jiving them, giving them a pile of garbage, a plate full of rotten beans with regard to ISIS. Well, how do they know that all of a sudden? How was it so, so hard, they asked. They didn't even ask, actually, why was it so hard to take out ISIS with the most powerful military on the, on the planet? We have 10 aircraft carrier groups in the, in the, in the, in the, on the oceans of the world. And we couldn't take out ISIS? We have ballistic submarines floating under the seas that can target a city. They couldn't take out ISIS? So something was wrong there. Now, Putin goes in, and in a week already got them on the run, according to British newspapers. Not according to the San Francisco paper. They're too busy covering a, a festival on the square. And then on top of it all, not only is he going to take them out, but he's going to wipe them off the planet. There's a story here from the... Um, what newspaper is this out of England? Russia has sent its crack special forces into Syria. And they're called the Speznas. Perhaps I'm not uh, pronouncing them properly. And the headline is, The move is a blow to Britain and America's mission to wipe out ISIS but maintain an opposition to brutal dictator President Assad. Russia has sent its crack special troops into Syria to back up Assad and his bid to wipe out his opposition. Putin's feared Speznas unit and a covert para battalion ghosted into the war-torn country and are preparing for an all-out assault on rebels fighting the regime, including moderate units such as the Western-backed Free Syrian Army. That's if there is such a thing. A military source said Putin's Marines are there to guard the air bases they are using against sabotage by rebels. But Spaznaz and air assault troops are not there to provide security to static objects. They are extremely aggressive and highly trained. And let me tell you something else. He's not going to court-martial them if they kill ISIS. Unlike Obama and Bush, who court-martialed our men who went out to kill. They're there to kill and kill they will. They're there to mop up after airstrikes, call in airstrikes, go on extremely covert missions against rebels and ultimately wipe them out. And by the way, there's more to it than that. These people are as tough as you can imagine. And they're not bound by Obama's rules of engagement. In addition to them, they've been joined by the 7th Air Assault Mountain Division among Russia's toughest and most shadowy troops. They went on bloody revenge missions against local jihad units to punish them for atrocities against Russian troops and civilians.